In this laboratory, we will be exploring the relationship between the vertical height above a surface and the speed that an object has after it has rolled down from that height. This laboratory explores the relationship between gravitational potential energy and kinetic energy. First, we'll do the experiment. We'll gather some data and then after we've gathered data and looked at what the data looks like and the possible model, then uh, we'll take a look at what the theory says should be the shape of that particular relationship and try to see whether our data provides support for that particular theory. The setup will require having a banana leaf designed to work as a ramp as you see in the image. You'll also need rulers and you'll need something to roll down that marble ramp, the marble leaf ramp. Uh, marbles or something else round that rolls well. The first distance there was 50 centimeters. I'll be measuring the time to go 50 centimeters for that particular marble. That's the basic idea. And by measuring the time and knowing the distance, I can get the velocity. I'll be measuring vertically, straight up from the floor, 5, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 centimeters. The key is I'm measuring vertically. I want to know the vertical direct drop height, the vertical drop height, not the distance along the banana leaf. Now, these measurements are a little tricky. I had to make them a couple times. You'll be off by a little bit. That's a source of error. We'll start with the marble at the bottom of the ramp, a height of zero, and that will give us a velocity of zero. And then I'll put the marble at five, release it and roll it and time it, get the velocity. Roll it from 10 centimeters, 20 centimeters, again, get the getting a velocity eventually each time. Rolling from 30 centimeters, 40 centimeters, all the way up to 50 centimeters. I will have to change the distance it rolls each time. That is at the bottom of the ramp. I do, I'm not measuring the speed on the ramp. I'm measuring the speed at the bottom of the ramp. The speed when the marble is rolling on the floor because I want to know the speed of the marble at the bottom of the ramp, at exactly at the bottom. And so here you can see my first run from five. It's gonna be about one second, run that again. So I'm timing it across a distance of 50 centimeters. This is what I'm seeing on my smartphone. I have pressed the start button, which is off screen, and stop when it hit the end. So start at the bottom and stop at the end. I'm starting, one, not now, this is where I start there and stop there. That's where I'm starting and stopping. I'm starting the stopwatch when the marble starts at zero on that ruler. And here you can see I'm taking five times for each height. Here's a roll from 20. And it was 0.47 seconds. There you can see I'm now rolling at a distance of 75 centimeters for a height of 20. That's because the marble is going faster and the timing is getting harder to do. So I'm stretching the distance. Now at 40 centimeters I'm pushing out to 160 centimeters. I did 30 at 100 centimeters. You'll see that in my sheet a little later. So at 40, I'm now letting it roll for 160. And at 50, I let it roll for 160. The times are still under one second. That's 0.63 seconds that there's 160 centimeters. Those are decimal points on my smartphone. So you'll see that too. Now what I've done here is I've taken five times from each height. So I've rolled the marble five times from each height. And each time I rolled it, I recorded the time to cross the distance at the bottom. So you can see that I have times of 1.01, 1.1, 1 1.22 seconds at five centimeters. I've then found the median time for each height. This helps eliminate error. I did five rolls from each height, and I take the median time. Not the middle of the five, but the middle if they're put in order. I've put them in order in my head 
from biggest to smallest and once they're arranged in order from smallest to biggest biggest to smallest either way the middle number is the median and the median is less prone to error once i have the median time then i divide that into the distance the marble rolled so when i rolled the marble from a height of five centimeters I was timing it across a distance of 50 centimeters. So I took the 50 and divided by the 1.11 and got 45 centimeters per second. That's the number I want, the velocity of the marble. From a height of 10 centimeters, I took, I was rolling it also a distance of 50 centimeters. And so I took 50 and divided by the median time of 0.55 and uh, out of that calculated a velocity of 71 centimeters per second. When I went up to 20 centimeters, I increased the distance of roll to 75, and the median time was 0.47 seconds. So I divided the 75 centimeters by 0.47 seconds, and so that gave me 160 centimeters per second. And that's where I got my velocities from. With the velocities calculated, I can now enter the data into Desmos, setting up a table. The first column will be the height, the vertical height in centimeters. I'll use an H for the height, H sub 1. And for the second column, we want the velocity of the marble, V1. From a height of 0, the marble had a speed of 0. From a height of 5 centimeters vertically above the floor, the marble had a speed of 45 centimeters per second. From a height of 10, we had a speed of 91 centimeters per second. I misspoke or misread it in a previous section, but it was 91 if you do the math of 50 divided by 0.55. At 20 centimeters, that speed of 160. At 30 centimeters, a speed of 181 centimeters per second. And at 40 centimeters, I had a speed of 225 centimeters per second. And at a height of 50, a speed of 231 centimeters per second. Now, the graph won't show the points because the scale is not yet correct. So I've clicked on the wrench tool, and I'm going to now manually edit the X and Y axis maximum values so that the points all appear on screen. I've set the maximum X value to 50, and I'll set the maximum uh, Y axis value to around 250. That will put all of the points onto the graph, and it's the shape I'll be looking at. While I'm here, I'll go ahead and add in the X and Y axis labels. Those will be useful later when I want to screen capture this graph to put in my report. So I've got the velocity in centimeters per second on the Y axis, and on the X axis, I'll have the height in centimeters. There you can see my points. They not only don't form a line, but if I get this adjusted right, you can see they're actually falling off a little bit as they go. They're curving, if you will, to the right as they head up uh, the graph. This curvature is a matter of um, some concern, potentially. And here we can see that the if I put in, say, a linear model, suppose I decide V1 is equal to M1, H1. This would be a Y equals MX linear model. I will find that that linear model does not fit well. The points arc above it, cross the line, and then are below the line. That's the sign of curved data. That's a sign of nonlinear data when it starts on one side and goes to the other. The theory will lead us to a slightly different possible model, one that looks like this equation here. V1 is approximately equal to a constant, I'll use k for a constant, times the square root, click on the square root, of h1. The theory will suggest that this is a more appropriate model. And indeed, this line that you see here, the line that just appeared, the blue one, hues closer to the data points and looks like it could be a more reasonable uh, a more reasonable um, result. 
Gravitational potential energy, the energy due to vertical height above the surface, is mass times the acceleration of gravity times the height. Kinetic energy is one half the mass times the velocity squared, the velocity at the bottom of the ramp. The gravitational potential energy at the start must be equal to the kinetic energy at the end. So mass times g, mgh, must be equal to one half mv squared. g divide through by the mass and you get gh equals one half v squared. Multi flip them around to get one half v squared equals gh. Multiply through by two and you'll get v squared equals two gh. Take the square root of both sides and you get v is the square root of two gh. However, g is known to be 980 centimeters per second squared. Therefore, v is equal to the square root of 1960h. Take the square root of 1960, about 44, and you get v should be proportional to 44 square root of h. Notice the mass has gone away. The mass doesn't affect the speed of the marble at the bottom. Now, there's one other type of kinetic energy to take into account. The marble is actually spinning at the bottom of the ramp. It's rolling, so the marble is spinning. And there is such a thing as spinning kinetic energy. It's called rotational kinetic energy. And in the book, I deal with that. But the ultimate effect is that it only reduces that 44 to about a 37. So the model that, that is suggested by the theory is that the velocity is proportional to the square root of the height and that there's a constant in front of it. And that model is the model that the theory suggests. Our data also tends to support the possibility of a square root model because it has that shape. And we'll take a look at that here in just a moment. The theory just outlined suggests that the velocity should be equal to 44 times the square root of the height. That data is graphed on the red dashed line seen above the top line. Below that is an orange dotted line. That takes into account rotational kinetic energy and comes even closer to the projected best fit line for our data, which is that blue line down below. For our data, that coefficient in front of the square root is K1 is estimated to be 33. You can see that there in the analysis section of this Desmos graph. The theory says we should be getting a square root relationship, a relationship that curves according to the red or orange lines. They are different only in the constant and only by a small amount. The blue line is slightly lower. This may be due to our speeds not being as high as predicted, and that will probably be a result of friction. We'll come back to friction later in the course. Friction is something that sometimes takes things off. What's important is the shape formed by the points. It's the shape that tells us the mathematical model governing the system. And that's a core idea in this course. The data provides a mathematical shape, and the shape is a mathematical model, an equation, in this case a square root equation. And that's a key idea in the course. If you know the math, then you know what the shape is going to be. The marble knows what to do. The marble knows the laws of physics. The marble knows about kinetic and potential energy, and it produces this square root graph, or square root shape. So our data supports our theory. Now it's your turn. Build your own rig. Take your own measurements. See what you find out. Don't believe what I'm telling you. Go check it out for yourself. And then write it up in a lab report with your introduction, your procedure equipment, your data table. Do your analysis. See what you find out when you run this. Tell me what you found out. Did you find what I found? It's not science until somebody repeats the experiment.